All right, this is a look at the action editor in Blender. This is Blender 2.48, and I'm gonna show you what the action editor does. Um, so here is the guy that I rigged in the last tutorial on rigging, my little blue guy here. And uh, so you might already have a character like that. But in order to animate him, I'm using the action editor. And uh, let me show you a keyboard shortcut. Hover your mouse over the action editor window, or any window, and hit control up arrow and control up arrow again so as you can see you can take over the whole interface so let's uh, bring this up and take a look at the action editor and see what it does action editor is commonly referred to as a dope sheet in other programs but I think action editor is actually an app name because of the fact that it actually does more than just uh, animate keyframes um, let me go through the basics of it very quickly so um, middle mouse drag will move it around uh, Scroll wheel uh, will zoom it. A to select all, and A again to deselect all. And uh, B to box select certain keyframes. And uh, G to move selected keyframes, and S to scale selected keyframes. Uh, before you do any of those transformation tools, I would suggest, I would dearly suggest going, clicking on this auto snap keyframe feature and selecting nearest frame. If you don't, you will find yourself in a world of hurt because of the fact that the keyframes will not be on keyframes, they'll be on fractions of keyframes. You won't be able to select them and edit them and stuff. So, Okay, um, that is a look at it. And um, as you can see here, we're in the walk action right now. And uh, down here in this little listing here, this is where the uh, action editor kind of earns its name. So if we bring this up, let me drag this over so we can see these here. So as you can see, if we drag this, we'll see that he's actually doing the walk animation. And if we, um, since I've created a couple uh, animations here, if I were to uh, select the idle animation, now as you can see, he's doing the other animation. So um, we can go ahead and we can, uh, here's, here's one, the rest pose, which is just a one frame animation. So I can uh, base other animations off of this. But um, it's so easy to, um, for example, if we wanted to make an entirely new walk animation, but let's say we wanted to um, kind of modify our walk animation a little bit. We want to use kind of most of the keyframes from before, most of the work that we did. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. We kind of basically want a different take on it. Well, it's easy enough just to select, um, select the walk animation and then select Add New. And uh, we can rename this to Walk 2, for example. And it doesn't look like anything's changed because it made an exact duplicate of that animation. But what we can do is we can go ahead and since we have the same, you know, we have the same keyframes, but we can go ahead and, for example, do a little different take on this animation here. All right, so that's the new animation we created, and we still have the original one here unmodified. So this is really a great way of um, doing basically, basically you could do different takes, like an actor doing different takes. You could get, you could get a base animation and then you could go ahead and, and non-destructively, um, well, it is destructive in the sense that you're destroying that one animation you're working on currently, but your original animations are still there. And you could go ahead and uh, play around with it. You could get some animation that looks good, and it, let's say you want to play around a little bit, you could go ahead and make a new action uh, just by clicking on Add New, and then you can modify that a little bit, and you can easily compare the two. I can go to my Walk 1, and see which one looks better to me. Do I like this one better or that one? Um, so that is one of the uh, key features of this that I think is very, very useful. All right. Um, the uh, other thing is, let me let me show you the, so I forgot to add more of the basics, which is, you may be confused as to the layout of this screen here. These little diamonds show you keyframes. And you might be wondering why these this pink bar is here. So the pink bar shows you that there's no change before between one keyframe and another. So as you can see here, the uh, leg, IK leg targets, of course, there's a change between all of these keyframes. All right, um, that means that, uh, well, you can visually see exactly which parts of your character are moving and, and when, okay? Um, so let's say, uh, for example, I'm gonna right click to select this keyframe and I'm gonna hit Shift D to duplicate it. I'm gonna drag it out. So now I can see that um, there are keyframes here, but uh, for example, there's no change between these two keyframes. So uh, I could go ahead and, and use this kind of 
uh, methodology as to create, for example, a moving hold or something like that. And so now I can see, let me drag that. So as you can see, his foot kind of plants early and, and just kind of stays there, all right? Um, some other things you're going to need to know, um, some selection tools. Uh, Control K will select all the keyframes on the current where the playhead is. And like I showed you before, Shift D is to duplicate and then you just drag and it won't uh, stop dragging until you click down the mouse, okay? And uh, this, again, is useful creating uh, poses and moving holds and things like that. Uh, X will erase selected keyframes, okay? And uh, if you don't like the interpolation type, for example, uh, here's my leg. Let's, let's go ahead and find a part where he's, okay, there he is. All right, so my selected leg here, all right. Okay, I'm going to right click on that and get rid of it. All right. And uh, let's say, for example, when I animated this, let's say that this leg was kind of dipping through the floor. All right. Actually, I might be able to re recreate that. Um, I'll select these and hit Shift T to bring up the interpolation type. And I'll set to Bezier or Bezier. Unfortunately, you can't see it on this one. It's it, it uh, is not suffering from that problem, but uh, let me go ahead over here. And, all right. Well, you're not seeing it here. I was hoping that the leg would kind of go through the, the floor there, but um, if you wanted to, you could uh, right click uh, on several keyframes and hit Shift T, and you could select, for example, linear or busy error constant, and then uh, that would change the interpolation type of those keyframes without having to go into the IPO editor and looking at curves and doing all that weird stuff. So you can go in here and, for example, uh, the uh, the foot, sometimes if you're animating uh, a walk cycle, the leg can at times kind of dip down underneath the uh, floor and it's because of the uh, interpolation is set to Bezier or something like that. And you can set that there. So um, that is the basics of it. One last thing that you need to know how to do, which is very helpful, is that you can reorganize these channels in many different ways. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, um, you can select, for example, all the uh, channels of the left arm. And you can hit Control Shift G and create a group of that. And uh, you can hit Control Click on it and rename it arm.l. Okay. So now, as you can see, I can collapse this. It'll show me anytime there's a keyframe here, even for one item, even if just the hand is keyframed, it will look like a keyframe here. But uh, I'll do that for, for the uh, right arm, Control Shift G and control click and rename okay and if I want to move these up and down I can hit shift page up and page down to to move them so you can easily organize your keyframes and as you can see we've already started to tidy this up so it looks much more organized and of course you can expand and contract these and uh, that is that is another useful thing to do um, the other thing that I need to show you how to do is uh, the fact that you can easily copy and paste, I'm going to select everything here, okay, and uh, I'm going to go to this frame here, and uh, I guess I'll box select these keyframes on this, let's say I like the position of this arm here on, on this uh, first keyframe, and I want to use it in a different, in, a di in, in another animation I'm working on. Well, I can go ahead in here and I can just go ahead and click on the downward facing arrow to copy those to the animation buffer. And let's say I want to add those to this pose here, okay? All right. Now, as you can see, each action has got its own separate groupings and stuff, all right? So um, I need to select the same channels again, and then um, I can go ahead and paste those. So as you can see, his arm updated. So I can I could even take whole groups of keyframes from one animation and paste them into another. Uh, I could take whole animations if I wanted to and, and, and paste or pin them onto each other. So as you can see, you have so much uh, flexibility and power and uh, you can um, make as many kind of animation takes as you want. Uh, you can edit things very freely and it's really a great tool for character animation. I hope that helps. Bye.